Hi, I'm Holly. Um, okay, so this is the third art talk I've written. The first one I wrote in grade nine, and it was really, really bad. Um, I wrote one last year, and my views have radically changed since then. The one I wrote last year basically said, you are nothing, art is everything. I had a bit of an existential crisis incited by Maurizio Catalan's Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, a taxidermied squirrel who had just shot himself in the head. Um, it made me cry, and I was offended, and I guess I wasn't mad that other people were offended. Anyways, after that, I had this whole realization, with the help of my pottery teacher, that I was dangerously narcissistic, and that art did not revolve around me. Art's this big thing, and it doesn't matter if it hurts me. I am small, I do not matter, only art matters. Needless to say, that ideology has been scrapped. So here goes my art talk. Um, I'll start off with a little bit about myself. I'm Holly McLaughlin. I'm from Oakville. Um, I was bullied pretty severely ever since I can remember. I had to change schools multiple times, and I didn't ever really have friends until I came to ESA. Um, one of the main things I was bullied for was my weight. They convinced me that being fat was a fatal flaw. This made me feel lower than everyone else. I was illegitimate. Um, I could be a real person, but I was fat, so I wasn't quite real or legitimate or worthy. I was vulnerable, I was ugly. Being big made me feel small. The bullying led to a sort of inferiority complex. I felt, and still sometimes feel, like a fish under the sea ice. There's some great barrier um, between me and everyone else. I felt like everything I did was embarrassing. Just existing was embarrassing. I took up too much space. I felt like nobody could see me how they see other people because I simply wasn't as good as other people. Accepting myself, let alone loving myself, was completely beyond me. One day, something shifted in me. I don't really know why, but one day I har harnessed my bigness. It wasn't a single day per se, but it was a sort of shift. I don't remember it happening, and I'm not sure what triggered it, but it happened. My bigness was no longer a disease. I love myself now, most of the time. The journey to self-love was long and rocky. I was always told my body was wrong, but it's not. My body's great. I'm great. I don't need to be small and delicate. My body is mine now, fully. I have learned to live freely, unapologetically. I still struggle with my weight sometimes, though. My art deals with themes of body image, empathy, love for yourself and others, vulnerability, and honesty. I make art from things inside. I figure that the deeper I go into my own heart, the farther I go into the universe, the farther I go into the hearts of others. We've all got this baby self. Strip away the ego, strip away judgment, strip away anything that isn't real. Get down to your heart self, your baby self, abandoned puppy self, fat little girl self. Be empathetic to everyone, because everyone has that self. Everyone cries, even Anselm Kiefer cries. Everyone is just like you. Everyone needs love. Sometimes I feel smaller and less real than everyone, but everyone is just as real as everyone else. I'm gonna t start talking about my actual art now, I guess. So the moment I realized um, how I like to make art, uh, I would call it a stylistic breakthrough, but that sounds pretentious, um, was life drawing class in grade 10. I did some actual life drawings, but about halfway through, I started to draw figures that looked more like how I see myself. Uh, these were also more abstract, with a focus on the round shapes of the breasts and stomach. Then I made my first painting, which was very similar to the drawings. The shapes of the breasts and stomach are very strong and they feel heavy to me. After completing this painting, I made my grade 10 culminating photography series. A couple of years ago, my house was being renovated and my mom and I moved into a rental house for a year. At this time, I was struggling a lot with my mental health, which led to a few of the lowest moments of my life. Recently, this house was torn down, and left behind, there is an empty pit with flowers growing in it. Um, in the pit, I shot this series in the pit as a reclamation of the space and a reclamation of my own life. 
Um, this sketchbook page reads, why would anyone want to be beautiful? It sounds demeaning. This is a drawing of a poem I did on a loose sheet of paper, which reads, I look up, and all my hugeness and heaviness, a butterfly can still stand on my finger. In Grenada, I laid on the beach and pulled myself up, shot myself out. Smells of sunscreen, algae, bonfires, you remember, you understand. So this is a drawing of two people in love. This is a drawing I did at the opening of an amazing show at Oakville Galleries called Down to Write You This Poem Sat. Uh, here are two more sketchbook pages. Um, so this piece is about my friend Charlotte. She was my first real friend, I guess, and she moved to Denver a couple months. So we were friends for two years, and then she moved to Denver. Um, and after that, she started talking to me less and less, and has since cut me out of her life completely. Um, these banners show expert excerpts from a letter I wrote her. Um, this is my kind of artist statement painting, where I figured out what all my work is about, which I actually wrote after I wrote my math exam. Um, so it reads, the deeper I go into my own heart, the farther I go into the universe. Be vulnerable, honest, that's where it's at. Be empathetic towards everyone, because everyone's got that heart self, abandoned puppy self, fat little girl self. You alone, and everyone is just like you. When you see majestic mountains or the face of God or something higher than yourself, it's still you seeing it. Ah, we're all just babies. Let's love each other. Let's touch our baby hearts together. <laughs> um, I painted a planter a while back for Nuit Blanche, um, and it's at Queen and Shaw, if you want to see it. Um, this painting is of three people in a car driving through the Grand Canyon um, following the moon. Um, it's about those really intense emotive moments, usually incited by music. The golden figure represents intense bliss, the blue figure represents intense despair, and the checkered figure represents an intense feeling that stands alone. This brings us to my most recent finished painting, which reads, yesterday I walked out into my backyard in my nightie and played fetch with my dog. The sky was bright but fading. My bare feet were on the grass. Everything was calm. I could feel a breeze through rips in the fabric. Right now I'm nauseous, but the sun will rise again tomorrow. I'll wait till the afternoon. I'll put on my nightie and play fetch with my dog. I've been doing a lot of collabs with my friend Camilla Freider lately, which I'm really enjoying. Here are a few of those. She's amazing and I could go on about her forever. Um, art makes me feel that realness that I've never felt before in my life. It's validating. When I'm making art, all my self-doubt and hatred goes away. I'm real. I've got this legitimacy that I've always wanted. I'm not just making art for myself. I'm making art for everyone who still feels like they aren't real. I love you. I would like to end with a note to all like fat women, <laughs> basically. Never apologize for being fat. Never apologize for living in your body. Let yourself live. Let yourself be large and heavy. Feel your stomach when you walk. Memorize your curves, map them. Be very still and feel your body glow. Feel, feel yourself radiate heat and light and love. You're the sun. Fat women are brave for simply existing in a world that tells us to be small, to be ashamed, to constantly cover up, pretend that we're skinny. I have known, and still every day know, the feeling that nobody could ever adore me because my body was wrong. My body was yet to be saved, to be cut down. Fat women, you glow. To me, you are everything. You are beautiful. Continue living bravely.